Okay, so yesterday we had ourselves the big news drop from Frank Saravelli that apparently Kirill Kaprizov has a tentative agreement in place with CSKA Moscow to head over there if by September 1st he doesn't reach a new agreement with the Minnesota Wild. We made the entire video yesterday, so go ahead and check that out if you hadn't seen it for the little scoop and my own thoughts about that situation, but... Today's video goes over a different aspect of Kiro Kaprizov, and in fact, highlights the idea as to whether or not this Saravelli tweet is even all too accurate to begin with, because we have ourselves two articles I wanted to go over here. The first one is here on rsport.ria.ru, the second one is on championet.com. These are two Russian media outlets. They both primarily cover sports, and they both have a big focus on hockey. They talk about the Kirill Kaprizov situation, and they both give their own insight as to what's going on, based off of what Frank Saravelli said. Now, because these are two Russian media outlets that have their own source and their own insiders conversing within about the conversation too, there are indeed some pretty interesting ideas brought up. The first article here on rsport.ria.ru, I will leave a link in the description, is translated from Russian into English. It says that Minnesota Wild striker Kirill Kaprizov will not play for CSKA Moscow in the upcoming season, a source familiar with the situation told us. The article then says that Saravelli reported that Kaprizov had a preliminary agreement with the team, yada yada yada, September 1st, we already spoke about that in the video before. It then talks about how Kirill Kaprizov was really good in the NHL, and that's pretty much it. So, the first article right here pretty much straight up says, okay, no matter what happens, Kirill Kaprizov will not play for CSKA, according to the source that we are talking to that appears to be familiar with the hockey team. Because, I mean, hey... We're a Russian media outlet. We have our own guys on the scene talking to KHL clubs and our source in the know about the situation is saying that it's not going to happen. Interesting. That's one article over here talking about the situation. Let's go over onto championat.com, which published a bigger piece, also in Russian, translated into English. I will leave a link in the description as well to this piece right here. The article title says this. Wims can quit the NHL for $10 million in Russia? Here is what lies behind the main rumor of the week. It then introduces the entire situation here. 24-year-old Russian forward Kirill Kaprizov is the main transfer task of the Minnesota Wild today. And yeah, I know, the language, the writing, it's kind of weird, mostly because it's a Russian article translated to English via Google. The striker, who immediately fell in love with the fans and the leadership of the Savages, I wonder what that means, had a phenomenal debut season for a newcomer in the NHL. Of course, the Wild Camp wants to settle the issue soon and keep Kirill for many years. It's just that, according to the rumor mill, Kirill Kaprizov himself does not seem to be eager to commit himself to a contractual obligation with the club from St. Paul for a long time and become part of the history of this team. Otherwise, the parties would have shaken hands long ago and the issue would have been closed. However, an eight-year, albeit tempting in terms of money, agreement is far from what one of the most gifted hockey players of our time needs. Okay, that's a pretty interesting way to put it. What does this article mean here? You can understand both the player and the club, which plans to tie the knot with Kaprizov, almost like Washington with Ovechkin. The fact is that in four years, the Russian will enter the market of unlimited free agents. That's the UFA status, most likely. That is, he'll be able to negotiate with any club. In turn, the Wild calling things by their proper names are trying to tie the hockey player's hands with an eight-year contract. In this case, Kaprizov will have to spend most of his North American career in Minnesota. This is kind of where the article gets weird. It's just hard to believe that this team will claim something serious and compete for the Stanley Cup. Kirill wants to win and not be the leader of an average team. Oh boy. The article then talks about what Frank Saravelli said, same thing, we spoke about that yesterday. And then the article asks this question. It's a little bit of a different one. What will change if Kirill returns to Moscow for the season? Next year, he'll only be 25 years old. He will continue to remain in the OCA status, which I believe they're referring to as RFA status, and complete freedom of choice, which is UFA status, is still not going to be there for a very long time. And then the article goes out and it drops a little bit of a bomb itself. 
There is practically no doubt that the information about the preliminary agreement with the Army Team CSKA Moscow and the amount of $10 million plus through the press was launched by the North American Forward's agent Paul Thefanos. This was done in order to put pressure on the leadership of Minnesota to make the club move and agree with the players' contractual wishes. And then it goes over why that's BS. Frank Saravelli said that it was $10 million plus the USD amount of Kirill Kaprizov's one-year contract. On the whole, the amount of $10 plus million looks cosmic. Nobody has ever received such money in the KHL, neither Kovalchuk, nor Datsuk, nor Morziakin, nor Ovechkin at Dynamo during the lockout season. And in addition, the KHL has a hard salary cap of 900 million rubles, which is about $12 million US. In recent years, the same CSKA has had to part with really good players in Marchenko and now Shalunov. Grigorenko and Nesterov return from overseas, but there's definitely no cosmic sum of money that Saravelli said the team has under the ceiling of CSKA's cap. Do not forget about the difficult economic situation in the country. Even Ogliarch clubs will not be able to scatter gigantic money left and right. Life has changed, including its sports component. So in conclusion, the information launched by Saravelli is intended only for ordinary fans or for people who do not understand how agency games are conducted. For people in the sandbox, on the contrary, everything is extremely obvious. Let's see how this story ends in the end, but it seems like the Whims and the Minnesota Wild will nevertheless agree on favorable terms for both parties in the near future. Arranging informational wars and bringing matters to a conflict is not beneficial for either the club or the player. So this article goes out there and it calls it a bluff. It says that this entire thing is a scam just to try to get the money shelled out there by the Minnesota Wild and for Kirill Kaprizov to get what it is that he wants. Primarily because the money that Saravelli is saying that Kaprizov would get in the KHL is unrealistically high, both in the standards of the league and in the contextual circumstances of the team CSKA Moscow. Combine this with the other article that we had saying that CSKA is not going to get Kaprizov and you have yourselves a pretty convincing argument that says that yeah, it's all optics. It's why yesterday in the video I started out and I said in the first sentence, yeah, the optics of this, man, it's crazy. If this were true and Kiro Kaprizov was going to go back to Russia, the Minnesota Wild would be losing out on the best rookie they've ever had since Gabrik, if not better than Gabrik, and one of the most talented, pure skill players they've had in a very long time. Which is why, you know, hearing that it could be some form of just agency wars leaking into the press where maybe an agent says, hey, Sarah Vale, can you tweet this out because I wanted to get this out there? Yeah, you saw what the Sarah Vale tweet it said at the end. Okay, the Wild are getting ready to start conversing again about this entire situation over here. And that's kind of what we're seeing because, I mean, the media is getting a big hold of this, right? It's the biggest story right now going alongside of Jack Eichel, these Kirill Kaprizov contract talks because the guy might yeet back over to Russia. And you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say that I really did not think that he would go back to Russia. Even in previous videos, in streams, everybody was asking me, okay, do you think Kaprizov's going back to Russia, and I'd always say no. You can go back and check the video evidence in the expansion draft stream and the entry draft stream. Everybody was talking about Kaprizov. But I will say, the video from yesterday, the tweet from Saravelli, because it comes from a guy like Saravelli, it kind of got me sketched out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. But now, seeing the perspective from Russian hockey journalists, it does make me think a little bit more that the Kaprizov to CSKA thing isn't really going to happen. And... It is, at best, just a very strong negotiating tactic. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about the Kirill Kaprizov situation here. The update. The KHL Russian media sources calling this a bluff. Links in the description will be available to both articles. By the way, if anybody is Russian and they know how to read the Russian alphabet, please feel free to correct me and the translation that Google did here in this video as to any of the sentences that were mentioned, because obviously, you know, I'm not a Russian guy. I'm Filipino. So my capacity for language is limited to pretty much just English. And so if anybody wants to go out there and correct what we said here and provide some Russian context, I guess, some language barrier support, then that would be much appreciated. But talk to me in the comments what you think, though, about the entire Kaprizov situation. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishadash Rolls 9 and bye.